in theory, in this edition of Staying the Obvious, is going to be very mellow. Very mellow. Let's see how that goes. November the 1st, we're hanging out here, Halloween's over with, all the hot chicks in skimpy costumes are sadly over and done with, it makes me cry a little tear, and I just decided I felt like recording this morning, because I just, I just got random shit I just want to throw out there into the world, mostly about the election, because soon it will be over, soon the election will be done, we won't have to listen to this shit anymore. There'll be no more whining and crying. Well, except for, you know, the entire rest of my life where all of you fucking sadists will continue to whine and cry about how there ought to be a law. There ought to be a law. The government should do something because without the government, who's going to build the roads? The roads! Well, this is Stating the Obvious, brought to you by the Central Libertarian Society, and I am the Great One himself. I am smarter than you, I am better looking than you, I am more charming than you, and when I fuck your girlfriend, she has multiple orgasms. I'm right, you're wrong, deal with it. This is Stating the Obvious, where I launch the cruise missile of my intellect that homes in on and destroys dumbass motherfuckers all around the other fucking world. A status, I hate you, I hate you so fucking much. Yeah, I listen to a lot of other, I shouldn't say a lot. Primarily, I listen to you three other anarcho-capitalist-leaning podcasts. I listen to Free Domain Radio with Stefan Molyneux. I listen to Bad Quaker with Ben Stone. And I listen to Freedom Fiends with Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. And I'm really impressed that I managed to get all of that out without screwing up any of those names or titles. Anyhow, Michael is... <clears throat> Excuse me, Michael has, as a recovering alcoholic who went through AA, Michael often talks about how in AA, people who manage to go a couple of hours without drinking suddenly cop this attitude towards other alcoholics and are like, eh, man, you're an alcoholic, fuck you, I'm better than you. And he always makes the analogy that anarcho-capitalists who knew, people new to anarcho-capitalism, which I suppose technically I am on a global, not a global, on a geological time scale i am new to anarcho-capitalism because i used to be a minarchist you know before that of course i was a communist and all this other shit anyhow michael's point see th- this, this whole podcast is going to be like this today just warning you michael's point is that people who are new to anarcho-capitalism are the ones who are all oh man i hate all statist i just i can't stand statist state blah blah, blah. you know and i look at this and i go yeah he's talking about me but you know what i'm okay with that I'm going to do this podcast. It's coming in the future. It's the one that's going to be entitled Fuck You and Fuck Your Feelings, in which I'm going to explain why, you know, due, in my opinion, due to the fact that because you actively support murdering other human beings, I don't really need to be nice to you or give a fuck about your feelings because as a statist, you will, at the very first opportunity that you get, you will kill me. You will have the state murder me. And you might have the state murder me for having marijuana, or you might have the state murder me for not paying taxes, or you might have the state murder me for protesting, you might have the state murder me for having a gun, you know, whatever. You're, you're a statist. When the state murders me, you're going to be perfectly okay with that. You're going to support it. And that's why I don't care about your feelings, and that's why I say things like I fucking hate all of you fucking statists out there. Because I do. Because I know. I know. This is a fucking fact. I know that those of you who are statist will stand back and allow non-statists to be murdered simply to preserve your way of life. And none of that has anything to do with what I want to talk about today. Mm. Oh, coffee. Coffee is good. It is 1st of November, 2012. Randy is over there in the control room on the other side of the glass. We're hanging out. I'm tired. i got to go work later today. It's going to be a long, long day. I just wanted to bump something out because I just felt like talking about shit. All right, here we go. I just watched, I'm going to remember to link to this, I just watched a video, ABC News, and where'd it go? There it is. And read a blog post that goes along with it, blog post from the Huffington Post, blah, blah. 
Anyhow, it's all about TSA agents stealing. So anyhow, as you scroll down in this link that I'll provide, there's the video from the ABC News report where they track their missing iPad to the TSA agent's house. The TSA agent stole the iPad when it got left behind at the checkpoint station. And the whole thing is great. I mean, the whole thing is fascinating. The whole thing is interesting because you have TSA agents stealing stuff, which is what government employees do. I don't understand why anybody's surprised by this. But the most awesome part of this video, and I kind of hate to give it away, but it's so good because you have to watch the video just for this, is at the very end when the ABC News reporter is confronting the guy who stole the iPad, and he's saying, no, look, our tracker says your, the iPad is here. You know, they push the button. The iPad that was stolen starts making noise. They've got the iPad and the TSA agent says, my wife took it. <laughs> now, I'm going and, and I'm gonna get accused of racism, but I don't care. Because I'm always accused of racism. Because when you're right, that happens to you. And when you're white, that happens to you. I love the, that South Park episode where Cartman's like, yeah, we got to go hide a, t- hide a token's house. Because in this day and age, black people can't do anything wrong. So black men as a whole, there's, and I'm admitting this is stereotyping and mythology and everything else, and that's the whole point. But like the myth around black men is, you know, is that black men are tough and they're going to kick your ass and they're gangsters and all this other shit. And so this black guy who is this TSA agent, you know, I mean, who's, I'm, I'm looking at a video, but I mean, he's not like an ugly individual or anything like that. He's a good looking guy. He's in shape. As far as I can tell, he's wearing clothes, you know, but, but the point is, you know, here's this. You know, in our society, black men are hyper masculinized as that's the stereotypical view of them. And so here's this black guy who stole an iPad sitting here telling the television crew who are filming all of this, Oh, my wife took it. It's like, dude, find your fucking balls. I mean, come on, man, be a man. Jesus Christ, if you stole the fucking thing, you're busted. Everybody they, they have video footage of him actually in the airport stealing the iPad. He doesn't know that, of course. It's like, dude, don't, don't, don't. God damn it. Is there, does anybody have balls anymore? Blame your fucking wife. My wife stole the, your wife stole the iPad. How did your wife steal the iPad from the fucking airport at the TSA checkpoint? Come on, man. If you're going to lie, first of all, come up with a lie that's plausible. Second of all, you're blaming your wife? How this poor woman who is married to this cocksucker? Wow, what a fucking poor choice she made. But he's a federal agent. What do you expect? Speaking of TSA, I also ran across a guy. I'll have to try to remember to link to this. Also, a blog post where a guy talks about going through security TSA, and he doesn't want to do the backscatter X-ray. Instead, he opts for the pat down. And he talks about the pat down. It wasn't that bad. And I just want to read to you, for those of you who are statist, and for those of you who think you're all protesting and blah, blah, blah. Oh, hang on. Yeah, thanks, Randy. Randy's reminding me of stuff I wanted to talk about. And I do need to talk about that. Thank you. Let me write that down. Oh, and if you want to contact us here at Stating the Obvious, you can send us an email. The email address is god at... Tu- at blah, blah, blah. God at C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com. That is the website, Cynical Libertarian Society on the internet, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com, and it's God, dog spelled backwards. God at C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com. Unlike, I know, I'm, well, (laughs) speaking of Michael Dean, I need to, well, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I'll start pod beef with him later. I need more listeners, so I'm going to start some pod beef with Michael, Maybe. I say that entirely, entirely jokingly. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So, he doesn't want to do the pat-down. He doesn't want to do the backscatter, so he opts for the pat-down. Good God. I'll get it right any moment. If only I had two cups of coffee. So, I'm going to read the last paragraph from his blog post to you. Quote, I passed seven lines out of the security... What? Yes, no, that is what it says. There we go. Now I can read it better. (laughs) All right, take two. Oh, and speaking of taking things, as I watched, what do you call it? Oh, 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 and the other documentary. See, now, now I'm run. Now I'm coming up with all kinds of stuff. All right, let me write that down. Thank you. All right, I watched Hunger Games. 
last night for the first time. Still haven't read the book. The book's been recommended to me. The movie was, eh, I mean, it, again, the, the whole time I'm sitting there looking at it, I'm going, oh, look, statism. Oh, look, presidential elections. Although our presidential elections, which I'm supposed to be talking about, which I haven't got to yet, would be a lot more interesting if we did them Hunger Games style. Right? I mean... I think instead of having two candidates for presidential election, we should have 50. Each state submits a candidate for president, and then we put them all into a Hunger Games arena, and only one can survive. Only one comes out. 50 go in, one emerges. I love that idea. That, that would be some democracy worth participating in. Because, you know, killing 49 sociopaths might make it worth living in a country dominated by one sociopath. It might. I'm just saying. All right, now, back to where I was like seven minutes ago. Guy going through airport security. Ops out of the back, scatter x-ray, does the pat down. Here is the final paragraph on his blog post. Quote, I passed seven lines out of the security area. Not one other person had opted out. I'm surprised because it's such an easy form of civil disobedience. It took about four minutes for my pat-down procedure while the x-ray machine takes 15 seconds. If just 10% of flyers opt out, the whole thing shuts down and they'll have no choice but to stop using them. The fact that most Americans don't want to be inconvenienced for only four minutes tells me how much they care about having an increasingly authoritarian government. From this point on, when I read a story about how the American government is encroaching on our rights, I'll just think of the masses who don't, just don't seem to want them. Unquote. I mean, and that sums up you statist in one fucking paragraph. Again, this is why I, I hate the Tea Party. This is why I hate Occupy Wall Street. This is why I, I hate all statists. You know, because the Tea Party, well, the government is evil. Well, yes, it is. And so we need to solve it with more government. Well, no. And Operation Fuck Wall Street, or whatever those fuckheads are called, the dirty hippies. Oh, the go- corporations are evil. We need more... Well, yeah, they are. Oh, we, we, we need more laws. We need more government. Well, no. The corporations came from government. The corporations are government. The corporations are the state. You... And then they all sit around and whine, oh, our civil liberties. But wait, when Obama signs indefinite detention, where is your protesting? When Obama is there when the Patriot has extended, where is your protesting? When the government passes Obamacare, which forces people to buy a service from corporations, you know, where is your protesting? And this guy's right. I mean, you people, and this is why I've referred to statism as or rather, maybe the, the principle behind statism, statism as the ethics of convenience. And that's another podcast that's coming up where I'm going to talk in depth about what I mean by ethics of convenience. But this is exactly a perfect example. <clears throat> Everybody wants to be outraged about the TSA, and they want, to be outra- they want to be upset about the TSA touching small children's penises, and the TSA stealing iPads and all this other shit. But when it comes right down to it, all you care about is your own personal convenience. You will not opt out of the backscatter and take four minutes to get a pat down in order to overwhelm the system and shut it down because all you give a fuck about as a statist is your own convenience. All you care about is yourself. And then, of course, you run around screaming that anarcho-capitalists are all selfish. Right? This is the attack that's always thrown at libertarians and anybody who leans towards Ayn Rand and anybody who's anarcho Well, you're just selfish. Really? As a statist, you're the selfish one because as a statist, you're the person who believes that your convenience is so important that other people should be murdered, other people should be imprisoned, you know, corporations should get bailouts so that they can keep making the products that you want to buy. Just this whole whole selfish thing coming from the most selfish people on the planet. And that's another reason why I hate you statist. All right, let me look at my notes that I can't even read. Oh, so documentary. I watched a documentary called Hot Coffee is Justice Being Served. I recommend watching this documentary. Here's the very short version. 
corporations are evil and the justice system is corrupt. Okay, and I, I don't necessarily disagree with that. They, there are some things in there that... Well, I mean, yes, sometimes corporations do bad things. They highlight, for example, so that I can't disagree with that. Then, of course, they come to, as they always do, the solution. And the solution is, of course, more government. Because, of course, the government created the corporations that are evil. The government protects the corporations that are evil. The corporations that are evil bribe the government, pay the government, own the government, manipulate the government, and of course the corrupt justice system is run entirely by the government. So obviously the solution to all of this is that we need more government. I mean, this makes perfect sense if you're a dumb fucking statist. If you believe the government can solve, you know, if you believe that, that's actually a bad example I was about to use, if you believe that we can solve flooding by adding more water, then yes, this makes perfect sense. Now, I do want to briefly talk about a couple of the cases. The first one, the title one, is the hot coffee. So, we've all heard the story about the woman who went to McDonald's, right, bought the coffee, spilled it on herself, burned herself, and sued McDonald's, got a bunch of money. And if you're like me, you've made fun of this. Okay. Now, this was interesting because, and again, remember this is a documentary, but of course people making it have their own slant for I did not run across anything in this documentary that I can say for a fact is factually wrong, unlike in a lot of things like Michael Moore's documentaries, which are full of things that can be shown to be lies, and Super Size Me, which had things in it that are fairly easily shown to be lies. I didn't do a lot of after-research after this documentary either. Okay, but the point is that as far as I know, everything in there, as they said it, is true, or at least could reasonably be true. I saw no giant stretches. So here's the point. The version of the story we all hear is, you know, oh, the woman spilled hot coffee on herself and she burned herself, blah, blah, blah. Now, if the information in this documentary is true, the woman was not driving. And I'm not saying the information in the documentary is not true, okay? I just want to be clear that I have not, I'm taking their word for it that everything in the documentary as they presented is in fact true. The woman was in the passenger seat, and she was trying to put, I believe it was putting cream and sugar or something in the coffee. She's trying to get the lid off, and when she popped the lid off, that's when the coffee spilled on her. Now, apparently, again, based on this information, the McDonald's at the time, the holding temperature for coffee was 180 to 190 degrees. That's what was specified in their manuals. That, now I... I, I'm drinking hot coffee right now. It sure as fuck not 180 degrees. Now, I also, in the documentary, also said that after all of this, McDonald's lowered the holding temperature to 170 to 180 degrees. Whoa. Why in the fuck you need 170 degree coffee is beyond me because nobody can drink that. That is, that's, that's really sketchy and I, I don't get it. And maybe this is why I don't, buy coffee at McDonald's, whatever. But the point is, they showed photographs of what they're saying are the burns on this woman. Again, I can't verify this, but I'm not disagreeing with it either. These were fucking third degree burns from 180 degree liquid, which is not what you hear when people like myself make fun of the woman who spilled hot coffee on herself and sued McDonald's. You know, and their point was the corporations made a very concentrated, determined media effort, you know, to ridicule and belittle this woman and make it seem like, oh, she just spilled some hot coffee on herself. You know, there, there, I mean, think about it. Any time that you've heard about this story, have you heard about the third degree burns? Have you seen the actual pictures of this woman's legs intensely burned? Now, again, I'm not saying she's completely blameless. Why would I... I mean, yes, she did put hot liquid between her legs and, you know, fuck with the cup. Okay, but 180 degree coffee? I mean, there, you know, this is the thing. We're all so focused on, everybody wants to focus on the blame. Is she to blame? Is McDonald's to blame? There's enough blame to go around. Let's blame both of them. Let's focus on why is the state involved in this. Why? Because as you watch the documentary, why does the justice system, the state, 
come along and like reduce the amount of money that she got in the settlement. The jury awarded her X amount of money. The judge, the state, the justice system comes along and says to the jury, oh, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. We're going to reduce that amount of money because McDonald's is a corporation and they give us a lot of money for funding. And those of you out there say, oh, but the state, the government is the solution. If we just had more laws, that wouldn't happen. No, if you have more laws, you're going to have more of that. The second case I'm going to talk about in this movie is a young woman who went to work for everybody's favorite corporation, Halliburton, a creation of the state if there ever was one, a company that makes its money from the state if there ever was one, you know, a company that, I mean, the government of the United States invaded a foreign country and destroyed shit almost exclusively just to create work for Halliburton so they could make more money. I mean, if there was ever a corporation that is a creation of the state, it's Halliburton. This, I think she was 19 years old at the time, this 19-year-old girl goes and gets a job for Halliburton over in, I do believe it was Iraq. They ship her to Iraq. They put her in a building, in a barracks building, with a bunch of men. And eventually... The situation comes around where after being quote unquote sexually harassed, I'm not, I put it in quotes because I hate that term, not because I'm disagreeing with her account of what happened. I'm sure she was uh, verbally, you know, hit on more times than she could ever stand. Okay, eventually the men drug her and rape her. And apparently the raping was like extensive, like requiring surgery to fix. surgery. So what happens? She goes and tries to take Halliburton to court, you know, to get compensation for having been drugged and gang raped by a bunch of Halliburton employees. And she can't do it because when she signed up to work for Halliburton, she signed an agreement that said any disputes with Halliburton would not be settled in a court of law, but they would be settled by arbitration by an arbitrator selected by Halliburton. Now, amongst other things, the people making the documentary, the statists, go crazy about this. I see she's given up her right to a justice system. The corporation made her do this. The corporation took away her right to justice. Blah, 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 blah. The solution is, of course, more laws, more state. Okay, people, what happened to her is wrong. I'm not fucking arguing that. She should be compensated for what happened to her. I'm not fucking arguing that. Here's what I'm arguing against as soon as I find my voice. <clears throat> the solution to this is not more state. The solution to this is not one more law. The solution to this is not more government. It was the government that created the concept of corporations. It's the government that does a shit ton of business with Halliburton that gives them money. It was the government that created a war in Iraq, which was the reason for Halliburton to be over there in the first place. It was the government that made the laws and enforces the laws that allows Halliburton to have its employees sign a contract that gives up their right, I'm using the word right, even though there's no such thing as rights, give up their right to access the justice system and have to settle all of their cases in arbitration with an arbitrator selected by Halliburton. All of that comes from the state. Without the government, Halliburton wouldn't exist. Halliburton wouldn't have anywhere near as much money as it has, which it couldn't anyway because it wouldn't exist. And Halliburton would not be able to get people to sign a contract saying they're giving up their right to the justice system and agreeing to arbitration with an arbitrator selected by Halliburton because the state enforces that. And without the state, not only could the state not enforce that, without the state, there would be no corporations and Halliburton would not exist. The solution is not one more law. The solution is no state. The solution is actual freedom. The solution is anarchy. 
The solution is the elimination of corporations, the elimination of government, the elimination of the use of violence and force. To I mean, if this woman tries to take this court to law, tries to take her situation to a court of law, the state... The, the government, rather, in this case, the government arm of the state, is just going to reject her. They're going to say, no, you can't do that. You sign this. They're going to shove her away. I mean, this is not going to the person, going to the organization, going to the system that is rejecting you in your time of need in order to solve your needs is not a good idea. It's not going to work. Next thing I want to talk about. So, yeah. Hot coffee is justice being served. I recommend watching it. And again, as always, I don't necessarily agree with everything. I, well, obviously I don't. I don't agree with any of their conclusions and their solutions, which is more state. But, you know, when I recommend things I disagree with, I recommend things I agree with, I don't, whatever. So I'm not endorsing this movie documentary as being representative of my viewpoints. I am endorsing it as something... Whether you agree with anything in it or not, you should watch it so as to have this information in your decision-making database. Okay, next topic. How are we on time? Good God. Next topic is, take one more swipe at the 2012 presidential elections, just because it's fun. As an anarcho-capitalist, I'm not voting for either of these clowns. I'm not voting at all. By the way, maybe I'll do a podcast on the Colorado Marijuana Legalization Amendment. I've thought about it. I can't vote for that. I can't do it because it's not... Well, I mean, it's legalizing marijuana in the sense of what legalizing is, which means it's going to regulate it. Here's, here's a really short version of why I'm opposed to this. Right now, the law enforcement spends its time hunting down people who have any amount of marijuana and then imprisoning these people. If the Colorado marijuana legalization thingy is passed, the police are simply going to spend their time hunting down people who have <clears throat> excuse me hunting down people who have more than an ounce of marijuana and imprisoning them. I think it's an ounce. Okay, so the point is, right now, the cops pull you over and say, do you have any marijuana? And then they search you. Okay, well, now, since it's going to be legal, I thought I wasn't... I know, Randy's pointing out that I wasn't going to talk about this. <laughs> Welcome to my world at 10 o'clock in the morning. Now... The police will pull you over because marijuana is legal. You're just going to have it right there in front of them because you're going to be like, look at me, cop. I can have marijuana in front of you. And the cops are going to say, well, how much marijuana do you have? And then they're going to be able to search you to make sure you don't have more than an ounce. If anything, this is going to actually make situations worse. It's going to make... It's going to give police officers way more probable cause. It's just like, imagine this. If you're standing... In your front yard, and your front yard faces the street. I know I'm not supposed to be talking about this. I'll get off this topic in a minute. Thank you. You're standing in your front yard. Your front yard faces the street, and a police officer drives by. He has no reason to fuck with you. He keeps on going. Now, you're standing out there, and you have in your hand a beer. The cop has every, every inclination and ability to pull over and hop out and say, You look young. Can I see an ID to make sure you're 21? Once the cop is there, now he's looking around. Oh, oh, you know, the, and that's that's where the dominoes start to fall. And when we legalize, when we, I mean the state, if the state of Colorado, not the state state, but the state of Colorado, if the state of Colorado legalizes marijuana, it's going to be the same effect. Now that people will be walking around flaunting their doobies, they're just going to be opening more doors to being harassed by the police. They're going to open more doors to the police having probable cause to stop you, ask for identification, check you to see how much marijuana you have on you. This is this is not the path to freedom. It's not. It's not. It's not. I, had to, I fuck, fuck, fuck. What is wrong with you, status? Oh, you're status. You're stupid. I, I know what's wrong with you. 
Okay, presidential election. Hussein Obama versus the Mitzi. Oh, if I remember, I should link to the epic rap battle between the two. Hold on, let me write that down. All right. Here's why you should vote for Obama. He's not Mitt Romney. And also, when we have the same president for eight years, the government is able to get more done. When the government... Dang, hold on. Wow. Okay, my voice. It's it's in there somewhere. This is why I shouldn't podcast until I've warmed up. What was I saying? Oh, yes. When we have the same president for eight years, the government is able to get more done, quote-unquote, more. When the government gets more done, there's more tyranny sooner. There is more loss of freedom faster. There are more injustices and <clears throat> imprisonments and murders and drone strikes and all this other stuff. More people die at the hands of the state faster. And the sooner and the faster, more and more people are murdered by the state and imprisoned by the state and stolen from by the state. That's the sooner we're going to get to the point where people have had enough of the state and start opting out. And the sooner people start opting out of the state the sooner we will have actual, real freedom. So, if you're a statist, or if, if, you're, if you're leaning towards anarcho-capitalism and you're trying to decide, and you, th- you think you need to vote because you still believe in democracy and you think that your vote counts and all this other shit, those are two reasons why you should vote for Obama. Now, why should you vote for Romney if you're... If, if you're anarcho-capitalist leaning, but still think you've got to vote because you've got to participate in democracy because it's legitimate and all this other shit. Reason number one to vote for Romney, he's not Obama. Reason number two to vote for Mitzi, if we get a Republican, and I honestly, I think this is, well, nah, this, is, this is one of the most important reasons. Okay, if we get a Republican back in the White House, the media will wake up and pay attention to what's going on. Because Can you imagine if McCain had done all these drone strikes, if he had signed the indefinite detention bill, if he had signed a bill that forces Americans to buy a service and product from privately owned corporations? Can you imagine if McCain had said he's going to close Gitmo and then it was four years later, it's still open. You know, I mean, if if McCain had done the things that Obama's done, if he played golf as many times as Obama's played golf, I mean, the media would be going insane over this stuff. You would hear about this until the media, just they'd be blue in the face telling you this shit. And yeah, I mean, Messiah up there in the White House doing all this crazy stuff, and all you hear about is just, you know, how cute his daughters are and how he signed the Lilly Ledbetter Act, which gives women equal pay for equal work, and yet somehow or another women are still whining that they are not getting equal pay, which means they must be racist because Obama signed a law. And if you, oh, if you disagree with Obama, you hate black people. You know, and Obama's doing all this crazy shit, and all we hear about is Michelle Obama and how how good-looking her arms are. I mean, seriously, I know all these people who are like, oh, I love Michelle Obama's arms. They're so sexy. Look, they're so good-looking. She has such great arms. I mean, she's married to a psychopathic, murdering, cocksucking motherfucker, and you're, you're t- telling me how fantastic her arms look? And you people vote, and this is why democracy doesn't work. Next reason to vote for Obama. I mean, vote for... They're they're the same thing. Vote for Mitzi. Is that by turning the president over every four years, you throw a wrench in government because they've got to go through all of the, you know, nominating people for all these positions and changeovers in government. And so it slows the crawl towards totalitarianism, towards authoritarianism. It slows down the number of people that are killed, murdered, imprisoned, raped, and stolen from by the state. The problem with that, of course, is that prolongs, how much longer, (coughs) the people of the United States will be willing to live under statism. And the fourth reason to vote for Mitzi 
and I'm, I'm being very selfish here, I think this is the most important reason to vote for Mitzi, is because the Messiah is a cocksucker, and he needs to be a one-term president. Because he is already, I mean, his place in history is assured. He's going to be worshipped, you know, just like Lincoln, who was a mass murdering tyrant and racist and all this other shit. But everybody thinks he's the most wonderful president ever. I mean, Obama is already there. Obama needs to be a one-term president just to put him in the company of people like Herbert Walker Bush and Jimmy Carter. I mean, there it is. So, you know, for those of you who are status, none of this matters to you. You're going to vote for whomever you've been told to vote for by your political party. But so for those of you still on the cusp who are ready, almost ready to give up voting, almost ready to realize that voting doesn't fucking matter, but you're just not sure yet. You really need to cast your vote. That's your voting guide. Make your decision based on that. I'm going to urge you, because they, they are the same, so that's I'm going to encourage you, if you feel the need to vote, vote for the Mitzi. Because we need, <clears throat> we need to embarrass Obama by getting him the fuck out of the White House. Now, speaking of the White House, I have gotten a shit ton of political mailings, many from the liberal Democrat side. Hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There it is. Okay. Actually, I had to pause that and try to make my voice work. I say this is what I get for not warming up my voice prior to podcasting. All right. I got this stack of dead trees, many of which came from liberal Democrats who care about the environment. Oh, speaking of that, so here in Fort Collins at the Lincoln Center right now, I don't know how much longer, there is an art display. And this art display consists of a crap ton, I mean a lot, like a thousand or more, dead insects pinned to the wall, arranged in patterns. And along with this display of dead insects pinned to the wall is this giant note about how all of these insects come from an endangered part of the planet and we have to conserve the environment. You know, and of course what that means is more laws, more government, more state. But all, all of these insects, whenever, or not all, whenever possible, she uses insects that are raised on farms specifically for this. And I'm looking, and like, this is, oh my God. It's dead insects pinned to the wall. This is one of the sickest fucking things I have ever seen. And this person is a fucking environmentalist wacko. And she's murdering insects. I mean, you're saying, oh, but they're just insects. Okay, it's one thing to swat a mosquito that's stealing your blood. You know, it's property rights, self-defense, so forth. But raising... And, and how, much, how much electricity and how much fossil fuels are burned and how much damage is done to the environment to maintain the facility in which these insects are bred specifically for people like her to kill them and make art with them. I mean, there, it's just, you know, and the, I'm just looking at this walls, three walls covered in dead insects. And this is done by some fucking left wing liberal Democrat statist bitch, you know, who cares about the environment and votes for Obama and doesn't give a shit that he's murdering people in foreign countries with flying robots. It's, oh God, it's, it's just really disgusting. It's, and I am, those of you who've listened to this, I am still and never will be an animal rights wacko. I will kill a cow and eat it in a heartbeat. But that's eating it. That's survival. That's life, okay? These insects were grown, raised, bred, and killed specifically for her making this art. 
and a lot of environmental damage was done along the way because those insects didn't get from the factory farm to that wall under their own power. They got there in an automobile that was burning fossil fuels and contributes to global warming and oh, we're all going to die. Now at this point, what are we, 40 minutes into the podcast? I'm actually going to get to what I was intending to talk about when I sat down. This stack of dead trees that has come to my mailbox from the Mitzi and the Messiah. It's, it's hilarious. All right, here, let me, let me just jump in. Under Mitt Romy's plan, millionaires and billionaires get tax cuts, but Colorado seniors could pay $460 more in taxes. $460 more in taxes. Right now, many seniors pay no income tax. Now, hold on. For those of you who are statist, Statists are always saying, well, taxes aren't theft. Taxes are okay. We need taxes. If you don't pay taxes, that's like stealing because your taxes pay for all these benefits and people need to pay their fair share, blah, blah, blah. Okay, right now it says that Colorado, right now, many seniors pay no income tax. Well, if they're not paying taxes, aren't they stealing? If paying taxes is so wonderful and does so many great things, shouldn't they pay their fucking taxes? Shouldn't they be paying their fair share? You work hard all your life. Now one candidate could hike taxes on your modest Social Security benefits. Why are their Social Security benefits modest? Isn't Obama the president? I thought he was he thought he was saving social security and giving these people all this money. What do you mean you're modest social? Let's see, what's this one? Uh, oh, get out and vote, blah blah blah. The Romney Ryan plan for Colorado. Four hundred sixty dollar tax hike on social security benefits, six thousand dollars more for Medicare cost. All to pay for a tax cut to the wealthy. Right, because the Obama administration and Congress have never, I don't know, bailed out any corporations. No, no, no. What do we got here? Yes, blah, blah, blah. The Romney-Ryan plan will end Medicare as we know it, stopping guaranteed benefits, forcing seniors into a voucher system. Look, how many times do I have to tell you people this? The Republicans are not going to cut off anything to the old people because old people vote Republican slightly like I forget what the stats were on the last election but slightly more than 50% of old people vote Republican the Republicans are not going to kill off the old people or cut off their Medicare or cut off their Social Security because that's their goddamn voting block all these old blue haired women who hate abortion and carry around Bibles that is their fucking voting block they're not going to kill off the poor people I mean the poor people they're not going to kill off the old people They're not going to uh, take away the old people's benefits. They have to keep the old people alive as long as possible so that the old people will vote Republican. What is this shit? Uh, This is a local election about how some guy uh, hates women, you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I I haven't pre-read that. I need to see. What is this one? Yeah, Jared Polis, whatever. (sighs) Changing Medicare into a voucher. Uh, every, um, as I'm looking through this, as collectively for the first time, because I've just been looking at these, I throw them in the pile. I have saved these up. The Romney-Ryan plan, all they've got is raising taxes on Social Security and Medicare voucher program. I mean, really, is this all you've got? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let me see again. The Romney-Ryan, a plan for a stronger middle class. They're going to cut the deficit. They're going to champion small business. They're going to go for energy independence. Energy independence. Oh, the giant lie of energy independence. Right now, I'm reading a brilliant book called Gusher of Lies. I forgot the name of the author. The book is not in the recording studio for me to go get it. And he wrote a second follow-up book. I think it's called Energy Hungry or something. Anyhow, Gusher of Lies. Brilliant. Read it. Energy independence is a giant load of horseshit. Doesn't exist. Never will exist. Can't exist. Stop worrying about it. Okay, back to Romney Ryan's plan for a stronger middle class. Right after energy independence, how energy independence makes the middle class stronger, I don't know, but fine. Skills to succeed. 
and trade that works for America. Really? I mean, so they're going to make the middle class stronger by cutting the deficit. They're, how are they going to cut the deficit? The only way you can cut the deficit is spend less or raise taxes. They're not going to spend less. And if they raise taxes, you're going to have to raise them on the middle class because that's where the money is at. Champion small business. Champion small business how? By making more regulations, by loaning, making small business loans at uh, ridiculous interest rates. What if you champion small business by leaving businesses alone? Energy independence, how does that help the middle class? Skills to succeed. Why, yes, if Romney and Ryan get in office, suddenly the middle class will have skills. They'll magically get these skills. I don't know where these skills are coming from. I don't know what kind of skills these are, but you're going to have skills to succeed and trade that works for America. The trade that would work for America is if the government didn't regulate trade, if the government actually just allowed free trade, allowed people to trade freely. That's why it's called free trade. Okay, you... you Again, it's, oh my God, it's statism. It's like, oh, we need free trade. The government has to give us free trade. The government can't give you free trade. You can only have free trade without the government. As soon as the government gets involved, the trade by definition is not free because the government is regulating it. Jesus fucking Christ. How goddamn dumb are you fucking people? Barack Obama believes his economic plan has worked. He does. He keeps. I remember in the last four years, how many times have we heard the economy is coming back? <laughs> 43 straight months of unemployment over 8%. Gutting welfare reform. We had welf- welfare reform. Job killing tax hikes. Oh my God. It's scary. Ooh, it's scary. All of this stuff is, it's, it's scary. Ooh, it's spooky. It's spooky fish. It's spooky politician. If you don't vote for me, my opponent is going to sneak into your house at night and kill you. Ooh, spooky, 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 spooky. Every full month of Barack Obama's presidency, America has experienced over 8% unemployment. That may be true, but again, the Messiah or the Mitzi or Ron Paul or whoever, this idea that somehow the president of the United States can control unemployment is absolute nonsense. Okay, yeah, Hussein Obama, he's been in the White House. Let's say that it's true that every month there's been over 8% employment. That may be true. It may not. I don't know. I don't care. The point is, he personally, as much as I despise him, I mean, he's still he's still a dickhead. Don't get me wrong. But Hussein Obama personally has no control over that. He can't do anything about it. He is not the Messiah. He is not Jesus. He is not a God. He is not a superhuman. The President of the United States, whomever it may be, cannot fucking control, influence, or change the fucking unemployment rate. Why are you people... Oh. I was going to say, why are you people so stupid? Because you're statist. I, From day one, Mitt Romney will put job creation first. Mitt Romney has a plan to strengthen the middle class and create more jobs with more take-home pay. Really? You're, really oh, my, more take-home pay? The, oh, God. Ah, oh, my brain hurts. Just this is why I love it. The, it's the, the presidential elections are like the WWE. It's like watching two wrestlers up there. Well, The Rock says this. Stone Cold Steve Austin, you want to talk shit to The Rock? You want to come up here with your candy ass, get in The Rock's face? You want to tell The Rock, hey Rock, I'm going to kick your ass at Summerfest? Well, you want to tell The Rock? Let me tell you something, Jabroni. You better know your role. I mean, that's all this is. It's, as somebody said, I forget who I should credit this to at the moment, the presidential elections are a popularity contest, a beauty contest between two fucking murdering psychopaths. And you people love this shit. And you're going to go out and just, people, the the Obama people, the Obama people are still assaulting me on the streets, trying to get me to take, get a job, making $12 an hour. You can get a job making $12 an hour, hoping get Obama reelected. 
If you have money to pay people $12 an hour to help get Obama reelected, why don't you pay them $12 an hour to do something useful? Like help homeless people or uh, you know, conservation work or clean up litter. But no, we got money to get Obama reelected. We don't have money to pay off the national debt. Here we go, Mitt Romney. We're going to have energy independence. We're going to have increased access to domestic energy resources. We already have access to domestic energy. Read the book, Gusher of Lies. You know, give every family access to skills to succeed. Great schools, quality teachers, and job training programs that are focused on building valuable skills that align with opportunities. That's called central planning. We are going to create schools and opportunities to give you skills that align with opportunities because we know what those opportunities are and we know better than you what kind of training and skills and school you need. That's socialism. That's central planning. Trade that works for America. Open new markets and curtail unfair trade practices by countries like China. You mean China where slave labor makes devices for Apple that a multi-billion dollar corporation then sells to people in the United States so that it has shit tons of money in the bank? What unfair trade practices by countries like China? China owns like, I've read somewhere recently, China owns something like 8% of something something in the United States and they're full of slave labor that's making devices for people in America to buy and they're being unfair. Really? Cut the deficit. Immediately cut non-security government agencies by 5% and cap federal spending below 20% of the economy. Bullshit. 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 I would like to see Mitzi get elected just so in four years I can say to all of you, look, he didn't do that. That is fucking impossible to do. Cut non-governments, cut non-security government agencies by 5%. Cut what by 5%? Cut their funds, their financing by 5%? Future financing by 5%? Cut their staffing by 5%? Cut their electricity usage by 5%? What's he talking about? Champion small businesses. Oh, we're going to reduce taxes on job creation. Stop increases in regulation. <sighs> no, you're not. Replace Obamacare with real health care reform. Mitt Romney pioneered Obamacare. What kind of, we're going to, and again, it's not, not give you freedom to choose your own health care. We're going to replace Obamacare with my idea of central planning. We're going to get rid of Obama's ideas of how your life should be run, and we're going to replace it with Mitzi's ideas of how your life should be run. And I still have, I still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14 more of these to go. I mean, here's here's Obama, a picture of him playing golf. You know, I mean, here's shit of, oh my God. Election, election, oh my God, election, got a lot. It's like two fucking retarded children in a sandbox throwing sand at each other. Only comparing Obama and Mitzi to retarded children is a fucking insult to retarded people. I've known retarded people in my life. A lot of them are smarter than both of these guys put together. 